The Blue Ridge Parkway spans 469 miles from Cherokee, North Carolina to Waynesboro, Virginia, connecting Great Smoky Mountains and Shenandoah National Parks. The parkway is known for its scenic views, unique weather phenomena, and for showcasing the beauty of the Southern Appalachian Mountains in the fall, just to name a few things. I'll be spending four full days riding the entire parkway as well as the additional 105 miles through Shenandoah National Park's Skyline Drive. And while it's not enough time to see everything the parkway has to offer, it's plenty of time to experience America's favorite drive. Or in this case, ride. What an incredible few days. Good morning from the Iron Horse Motorcycle Lodge. In case you missed the last video, I have spent the last couple of days riding around the Smoky Mountains. I'll be sure to link that video right up here for y'all because as I mentioned in that video, it was probably one of the best days, couple of days for that matter, that I've had on a motorcycle in 2023. Maybe in the last like two years even. It was just absolutely gorgeous. The pavement was perfect. Every, everything was great. But I don't want to speak too soon because today I'm starting a bucket list ride that I've been wanting to do for a while and that is ride the entire Blue Ridge Parkway as well as Skyline Drive. But for now I think it's time to make breakfast as well as pack camp up because we have a lot to see today on day one and I don't want to miss any of it because we're losing daylight. So let's go. Since there's very few food options along the parkway, I decided when planning this trip that I would cook at least half of my meals while camping along the way. And since y'all are always asking me what gear I'm using and how I pack it, let's go over some of it. First, I always carry X-Series collapsible cookware from Sea to Summit to prepare and serve food. And as y'all have seen in plenty of my videos, I love my tiny but mighty Jetboil Micromo. I use the Micromo to boil water, make coffee, and frequently use the pot support with other cookware like my Sea to Summit 8-inch Alpha Pan. Breakfast this morning is going to be blueberry oatmeal as well as spam and eggs. I made a really big breakfast this morning because I don't plan on stopping again until we get to our dinner location, which has come highly recommended and I am so excited to get there this afternoon. Let me go ahead and finish breakfast and we'll get on the road. One of the things I really like about the X-Series cookware is that it's made of high grade collapsible silicone material. Once everything's folded up and packed into each other, I store all of the cookware in its own eight liter dry bag so that any food residuals stay off whatever else might be stored in the bigger dry bag that y'all are used to seeing packed up on the back of my bike. In the other big river dry bag that y'all are used to seeing on my bike, you'll find all of my camping gear. My tent, sleeping bag, pad, pillow, and liner all fit in one 35 liter big river dry bag. In the summer, I can use a 20 liter dry bag since my gear is less insulative and takes up less space. But since temperatures are forecasted to drop below freezing at night, I decided to bring my cold weather kit. All of these products will be linked in the video description for you to check out, by the way. Once those things are packed up, they get put onto the back of my bike with a set of rock straps. And now my little home on two wheels is ready to go. To get to the start of the Blue Ridge Parkway, I have to travel roughly 40 minutes north to Cherokee, North Carolina. Cherokee is also the gateway town to Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which explains the traffic jam. Fall is the busiest time of year to visit this area, with millions of visitors in October alone. So I just got gas in Cherokee, North Carolina. This is the closest town to the southern terminus of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, and it's smart to get gas here because it's the only chance that you're really gonna have to get gas close to the parkway until you get closer to Asheville. There's no gas actually along the entire parkway, so you have to get off the parkway to get gas. And on a motorcycle, that's something you should definitely keep in mind because we don't all have gigantic gas tanks, uh, especially people, you know, on sports or smaller bikes. But Cherokee has all kinds of lodging if you want to camp here if you want to get a hotel here and start your day really early um, there's all kinds of little shops there's also um, a museum about the tribe as well which i would love to go to but unfortunately i don't have time on this trip but i think that i could come back here numerous times to do this ride 
and not run out of things to see and do. There's so much to do on this first stretch between here in Asheville that I would love to see, but unfortunately we're not gonna have time to see everything today, but I guess we'll have to come back. But let's go ahead and get on the road and see some pretty stuff. This, this section between Cherokee and Asheville I've ridden before and I absolutely loved it. So I'm excited to do it again. <laughs> The Blue Ridge Parkway was the world's first parkway designed exclusively for leisure travel and recreational use. The idea for the Blue Ridge Parkway was born when President Franklin D. Roosevelt visited the newly constructed Skyline Drive in Virginia in 1933, where a suggestion was made that the road should be extended to connect with Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Construction began in 1935 and took 52 years to complete. Today, the Blue Ridge Parkway is nicknamed America's Favorite Drive and features 26 tunnels and 272 overlooks throughout the 469-mile scenic drive. Better believe we'll be enjoying at least a dozen of these overlooks along the way. I love a good scenic overlook. Of course, I had to stop off here at the highest elevation point on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, this is only about an hour from the southern terminus, so it's not too far up the parkway. So if you decide to ride just the first portion between Cherokee and Asheville, you will pass this spot. But I don't want to spend too much time here because we still have so much to see that I haven't seen before, and I've already seen this. So let's get back on the road. The elevation of the parkway varies from 6,053 feet to 649 feet as it winds across the Blue Ridge Mountains, meaning some areas of the parkway are far past peak fall colors while others are still putting on a show. When is the best time to see these vibrant colored leaves in all of their glory? Typically, mid-October is your best bet, but it varies from year to year. Now, I couldn't go to Bridal Bell Falls yesterday and not come to a waterfall today because there are just so many waterfalls in this area. So I decided to get off the parkway by about nine or 10 miles on 276. 276 is a great ride, by the way. Uh, whether you get off the parkway and just ride it to Waynesville or you come down here and go south on it, absolutely gorgeous ride, highly recommend it. Um, but we're at Looking Glass Falls. This is a very popular stop and I can't wait to show you it because it is beautiful. perspective how big this waterfall is. It's a big one. Super pretty. Good news is the waterfall's really pretty. The bad news is there's a lot of other people who want to look at it too. So this was a quick stop and back on the road to go. got done riding the first like 80 miles of the Blue Ridge Parkway between Cherokee and Asheville um, and as I got closer I pulled over at one of the bajillion overlooks and looked for the nearest gas station to the parkway. Um, you don't get a lot of options to exit the parkway and get gas quickly um, so if I was you I would recommend getting off in Asheville. I'm currently at an Ingalls and it's right off the parkway. I probably went a mile off the parkway which and parkway measurements is not very far. <laughs> I left Cherokee at about 12.30 to start the parkway and I pulled over a couple of times, um, but not a ton. And it is currently 4.55, just for reference. So even though you don't go very far, it takes a very, very long time to get in But I think we have about an hour and a half until we get to dinner, which I'm very excited about. The 
Blue Ridge Parkway is operated and maintained by the National Park Service. Along with there being no gas along the parkway, there's also very few food, camping, and lodging options. However, one iconic spot just north of Asheville remains the only commercially ran establishment on the entire parkway, offering both food and lodging, and is a popular destination for motorcyclists. just got to where we're going to be having dinner tonight and also I'm going to be staying here for the next two nights for a completely separate video. So I'm currently at Little Switzerland. This was the most recommended place that y'all told me I had to come eat at and I had to check out while I was on this trip. So I decided to stay here for two nights and focus on doing a completely different video about this place as well as a couple of the unique, unique rides that are in this area. So I'll link that video up here whenever it's published, but I need to get checked in so that we can go eat dinner because I am starving. <laughs> For those curious, Little Switzerland definitely lived up to the hype of being one of the top destinations along the entire Blue Ridge Parkway, and I'm so glad I stopped here. The food was great and they have pie, so I see why everyone told me I needed to stop. If you're traveling solo, they do have a motorcyclist only lodge on site, which is where I'll be staying. You can find out more in the next video that I'll link to once it's published. Since I had the luxury of staying in a heated room and not having to pack up camp, I decided to get up early and hit the parkway before sunrise. With nobody else on the parkway, it was probably my favorite morning of the trip, especially since I got to ride through and eventually above a thermal cloud inversion. The Blue Ridge Mountains are one of the best places in the world to witness an atmospheric phenomenon called thermal inversion. These low-lying clouds rest in the mountain valleys and move in a wave-like motion. The best time to witness this sea of clouds is just after sunrise, especially in the fall. Good morning. Today is officially day two of my Blue Ridge Parkway trip. Uh, Little Switzerland was awesome. Be sure to watch that video. I'll link it right up here for y'all. Um, and there's been a bit of a change in plans. <laughs> so there's a Arctic blast that is sweeping the country right now. The temperatures are going to go from highs in the 70s and low 80s to highs in the low 40s in the next couple of days. So. I'm currently about 300 miles, 350 miles from Shenandoah National Park, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get all the way there today, but I'm going to get as far as I possibly can so that I can enjoy as much time on Skyline Drive tomorrow as I possibly can. So I'm going to have to cut a couple of things out that I wanted to see today, but that's okay. I've already had to cut so much out that I wanted to see like Mount Mitchell and some other places just because there just isn't enough time. And I think that's something that I'm really enjoying about the Blue Ridge Parkway is that you can make so many trips out here and still have so much to see. So I've also learned that there are a lot of other off-road routes out here because everyone's on an ADV but me it seems so definitely plan on coming back in the future but on that note let's get on the road my next stop of the morning is the most iconic landmark along the entire Blue Ridge Parkway this seven mile section of the Blue Ridge Parkway was once known as the parkway's missing link Completion was delayed for 20 years as engineers and architects meticulously designed a roadway that would preserve and protect the fragile habitat of Grandfather Mountain, which contains some of the oldest geological formations on Earth. Finally, in 1987, the Linco Viaduct was completed, connecting all 469 miles of parkway together. Considered an engineering marvel, it's one of the most successful fusions of road and landscape on the parkway. I am currently at the Linco Viaduct. This is one of the most popular places on the parkway in the fall because of all the fall colors. Now I am here just past peak, so there's not as many people here as I was thinking there would be, um, but that's one of the reasons I got up early and why I stayed at Little Switzerland because it's only about 40 minutes from this location. Um, I just watched a guy rappel down a rock like right underneath the viaduct. It was so cool, but Today's the last warm day of the year. Like I said, that cold front's coming in. So I had a feeling 
that this place would end up being a parking lot by the afternoon if I didn't get here early. So it's about 8.45. So I'm a little later than I wanted to be. I actually wanted to catch the sunrise here, but Chestoa wasn't a bad second option. way to grab some coffee and some snackies to eat along the parkway. I stopped at a spot called Camp Coffee Roasters and luckily they had some little like breakfast items and some cookies and they had like little uh, breakfast biscuit type things but it's super busy here. <laughs> so I decided to just pack the snacks along and we'll eat them along the parkway here in a bit. But I got one of their firefly coffees and it has like toasted marshmallow caramel and another flavoring in it it was so good and of course i had to add a couple shots of espresso because we got a long day today a few hours and construction detours later i had finally made it to the virginia state line this area of the parkway is known as the plateau region noting that the mountains have been replaced with rolling hills and farmland officially in Virginia. I'm over halfway done with the parkway and I'm finally stopping to eat the snacks I bought this morning. Um, there's some big detours due to construction on the parkway right now and then once I got back on the parkway there weren't really any um, overlook stops and if there were they were completely full because there's just not as many of them in this section of the parkway as there are in like the southern portion of the parkway. Um, if I was going to split the parkway into three pieces like north, middle, and south, or central, I guess. I'd say the middle or central portion is where I'm at now. I'm about 100 miles south of Roanoke on the parkway, and the scenery has definitely changed. Um, there's a lot of pine trees, and you can smell them <laughs> while you're riding by, which is really cool. Uh, and you can see mountains out in the distance, but it's nowhere near as mountainous as it was um, in the southern portion, not even this morning. Once I got north of uh, Blowing Rock, it completely changed so yeah i finally got to stop to eat my food i got this morning at camp coffee i'm gonna finish eating the snacks here it's about 1 30 in the afternoon and i'm hoping we can get to the peaks of otter campground for the evening the plateau region of the parkway was definitely my least favorite but as i got closer to roanoke it was nice to see others out enjoying the parkway on one of the final warm days of the year after a quick stop for gas and groceries in Roanoke, the mountains and valley views gradually returned as I headed further north. After a 250 mile day that felt like it would never end at times, I was definitely looking forward to a few moments of moto camping zen before nightfall.
Dinner tonight is filet mignon because apparently I didn't get enough at Little Switzerland. <laughs> and a little chopped salad kit. I call this a one pot meal. The only thing I use to make this is the Sea to Summit X pot. I've made this on other camping trips that I haven't filmed and it's so easy to make. Filet mignon and a chopped salad costs like $15 at the grocery store and it's super easy to make. When you get the little chopped kits you can put all your trash back in this bag when you're done which makes cleanup super easy. The only utensils I needed were a fork to eat my meal, a knife just to open stuff, um, or to cut the steak if you need but it's filet mignon so you could really use a simpler knife if needed and then I have tongs to flip the steak so overall it didn't really require much. Oh, and of course, a camp stove and fuel, but all things considered, this is a really simple meal to make. And yeah, I'm going to enjoy this <laughs> while it's still warm. All night it has sounded like this and it sounds like it's raining and I just did not get very good sleep it's much louder than you would think it is but good morning <laughs> Gosh, there's so many leaves falling out of the sky right now. It is so gorgeous. <laughs> now today is officially my final day on the parkway. I'm starting it here at the Peaks of Otter Campground. This is 85 miles from the northern terminus of the Blue Ridge Parkway before you enter Shenandoah National Park and continue on to Skyline Drive. This campground is only $20 a night, but it does have flush toilets and they're actually very clean bathrooms. I was very impressed. <laughs> and there were a lot of people camping here. Today is the last night that this campground is open for the season, so that might have something to do with it. Also, this Arctic blast that's coming in today might also have something to do with it as well. <laughs> but uh, for $20 a night, you really can't beat it. And they have like over 70 first come first serve campsites available at all times. That's more than what you can reserve online ahead of time, which is pretty cool. So I would totally stay here again, but I will say that the campsites for motorcycles are kind of finicky, especially in the fall because everything is covered in leaves right now, which as y'all know, get really slick. They're like little banana peels when you're on a motorcycle. So uh, you just have to be super careful. Luckily, I found one that I could just pull right up to the steps to and then walk my stuff up. I didn't have to back my bike up a campsite or uh, pull it up into a driveway and the back it back down, uh, which made it really easy for me. That being said, I think it's time to get camp packed up and hit the road because we have a lot to do before it gets really cold this evening. The storm blowing in will bring a drastic temperature drop and rainfall by the afternoon. By the time I wake up tomorrow, the temperatures are expected to be in the low 30s. While I don't have to go far today, I do have to race the storm to my destination. Which means I'll have to cut out a few things again for my itinerary. <laughs> All of the winds overnight made for quite the ride first thing in the morning. Since very few cars had traveled the parkway, the roadway was covered in leaves. In some areas, I couldn't even tell where the road was. Luckily, the leaves were keeping me on my toes, because after 400 miles traversing the parkway, I was starting to feel like I had been seeing the same corners and overlooks over and over and over. <laughs> The Blue Ridge Parkway is beautiful, but it can definitely feel repetitive at times.
We made it to mile zero. We're officially at the northern terminus of the Blue Ridge Parkway. Shenandoah National Park starts right over there. But I've officially completed the whole Blue Ridge Parkway and I can finally check that one off my bucket list. <laughs> and now it was time to ride all 105 miles of Skyline Drive through Shenandoah National Park, crossing another scenic byway and national park off my bucket list. Do you have any questions? If there was one overlook you could stop at, which one would it be? Sawmill, 10 miles up. Perfect, good to know. And if you were gonna eat at the lodge, what would Either you one of them, because it's the same same uh, concessioner running it, so the menus are quite similar. At Skyline? Skyland or Big Meadows. Okay. Whatever you do, make sure you get the dessert, the blackberry ice cream pie. That's definitely, I'll have that as my main meal. What would you get if, on the menu, what would you eat? You know, I have an eight on, but I know there's all the food's pretty good, but the, that blackberry ice cream pie is easy. That's it. Yeah. That's dinner, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good have two know. of them. Have one for dinner, have one for dessert. I'll have one for you. How about yeah. that? Well, that would be nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, have a good one, ma'am, and be safe. Thank you. First of all, that was such a wholesome conversation. <laughs> Second, the park ranger definitely knows his overlooks. With an imminent Arctic blast chasing me up the mountain, I knew that the cold front was coming in quickly and that my stops to enjoy the scenery would be limited today if I wanted to stay dry. I arrived at camp just in time to pitch my tent in the rain. <laughs> like my outfit <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> I have no idea how long this walk is, but I did not come to Shenandoah National Park to not get this little treat. So we're going to dinner. Now, originally I was gonna take you out to Skyland, which is like the original lodge and dining room in the park before it was even a national park. But since I'm camping at Big Meadows Lodge and I just walked up a huge hill, which is why I'm out of breath. <laughs> We're gonna be going to the Big Meadows dining lodge room thing. They have the same menus, so it all works out. And I didn't have to ride my bike in the rain. I did not know this until tonight, but the little pole, the little bag that the poles come in, turns into a little light bar. So it snaps right in here. I was wondering what the snaps were for and what it's, the light bar was, and I was looking at this bag and it said it. And I was like, oh my God, that's so genius. So you can put this up here, you can put whatever lights you want in it. I just have my headlamp in it right now, which works out well. But yeah, that is super, super cool. <laughs> well. As y'all can tell, we are back in the tent <laughs> and um, essentially I got to camp at about four o'clock, which I was so excited about. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get to camp early and it started raining as soon as I got here. <laughs> Mind you, the temperature was starting to drop uh, from 60 degrees to 35 in the morning. So um, that cold front officially hit as soon as I got here. So I scrambled to put the tent up. Um, and by the time I got everything in the bear locker, so it would also be dry. That's a nice thing about also having a bear locker is because you can keep all your stuff dry in there. Um, it was, I was just ready to go eat. <laughs> so, uh, I walked over to Big Meadows Lodge originally. I was going to take you all to Skyland. Um, but I just didn't want to deal with riding 10 miles up Skyland Drive in the dark in the rain back and forth <laughs> like the park ranger mentioned earlier uh, both places have the same menu so why not just walk right here to big meadows um so that's what i did and of course i had to tie this trip off with the blackberry ice cream pie uh, that is why i wanted to stay in the park tonight in the first place was because i wanted to try that pie it is a thing you're supposed to do whenever you come to shenandoah national park 
and wow it is super rich um if you like ice cream it's delicious uh it's basically a pie that's made out of ice cream exactly what it's called and it's taught the the pie itself is ice cream right it's blackberry ice cream and then it's topped with this like super whipped creamy meringue and this blackberry like puree uh compote it was delicious um i also had the meatloaf for dinner and that was really great too especially since i didn't eat all day today so it's officially time for me to start testing out the Suda Summit gear and we'll see if I freeze tonight. I'll see y'all in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. It is currently 35 degrees outside. I have not left my sleeping bag yet because it is so warm in here. That I just slept over eight hours. My tent is soaking wet on the outside, nice and dry on the inside, and I am snug as a bug in my sleeping bag. This sleeping pad did wonders. I am very excited about it. <laughs> we have roughly 50 miles left of Skyline Drive, and then this wild, crazy road trip is officially over. <laughs> Governors. Ice on my motorcycle. I found out later that morning when I talked to a park ranger that the temperatures forecasted for the campground online aren't always accurate. It is crazy. I look like I'm going hunting. <laughs> it is crazy when you crawl out of your tent and realize how much it was insulating you because it is so much colder out here than it was in there. Whew. I'm gonna hurry and get camp packed up and try and get out of here. There is ice on my motorcycle, so I'm curious how the roads are gonna be. And I'm on top of a mountain. Usually the weather apps use temperatures at the base of the mountain rather than at the top where the campground is. So it was definitely well below freezing overnight, even if my phone told me it wasn't. When there's ice on your tent and you were warm all night and slept for eight hours, you know your equipment works. <laughs> wow. There's nothing worse than packing up a wet tent. Carefully dodging any wet spots on the roadway that could have turned to ice from the storm, I eventually made it down the mountain and completed Skyline Drive at the northern entrance, thus completing all 574 miles of the combined scenic byways. <laughs> what an incredible few days. I'm so stoked. I finally made it to the end here. <laughs> That's it for now, y'all. I go ride 600 miles home in this freezing cold weather. So until the next one, I'll see y'all on the road. Thanks for watching all the way to the end if you made it. <laughs> Later, y'all.